I started drinking coffee just to spite you. I had to shake my drinking habits up. I started drinking coffee just to spite you. Cause you'll never ever see me drink a cup. Welcome back everybody to Off the Cuff. Every Adam Banks here with you. And as promised at the top of the hour, I have a special guest coming in studio with me, Vanessa Davis, who is a singer and songwriter. And she is the winner of Singer Songwriter of the Year and Album of the Year for the triplets at this year's 2024 Lexington Music Awards. But before I have Vanessa join me via studio, in studio, in person, I would like to play one of Vanessa's original songs that she wrote. This particular song is called B-List Celebrity, and B-List Celebrity will be Off the Cuff's Song of the Week. And when we come back, we will be joined by Vanessa in studio. We'll be right back. All right, folks, enough waiting. I can't wait anymore. I just, I'm too excited. So, you just heard B-List Celebrity by Vanessa Davis. And, folks, without any further ado, I have the actual Vanessa Davis <laughs> sitting in studio it's me, with me. the real one. <laughs> hey, thank you so much, Vanessa, for being here. This is a long time coming. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited. Well, you are a star. I was oh. telling everybody uh, before you came in the studio that you were a big winner at the 2024 Lexis. Yeah. Uh, the Lexington Music Awards is a big award show here in town. Mm -hmm. You were a big winner. You took home Singer Songwriter of the Year and Album of the Year. Yeah. So when you're winning awards like that, what does that mean to you? Oh, man. I mean, it, you know, it's... It's validating, but at the same time, when you don't win, that doesn't mean that it's not validating because I, ha I haven't won everything that I've been nominated for, you know, but um, being nominated is everyone says it's a huge honor, but it honestly really is because it's peer to peer. Yeah. And and winning something like that, especially album of the year, because the thing about this EP is that there's it's not fancy. It's it's not hugely produced. There's no extra instruments. There's no I didn't hire a a band to come in and play because I'm a solo act. Right. I wanted something that reflects what I'm going to sound like when you hear me live. And so the fact that it won album of the year um, to me says that people were listening to the songwriting and they were listening to the vocal quality and they weren't, you know, um, devaluing those as opposed to a ton of production value, but not a lot of time and energy spent on vocal training or on writing really good, poignant lyrics. So that meant a ton to me because I was like, wow, you guys heard what I meant to do with this album, yeah. which was to strip it of, of any fluff. Not not the production is fluff because I love a highly produced album. But um, for me and for what I do, I wanted it to reflect what I'm going to sound like in real life if you come to hear me at a song writers showcase yeah, so i think you pride yourself i've noticed you pride yourself a lot on being not just a singer but yeah. a songwriter oh i mean definitely yeah you're, you're yeah. big on that how important is that to you as an artist to write original music well i mean it's really a vice now isn't it <laughs> because yeah, it is it's i mean you know you told me before you were talking about taylor swift right. who isn't talking about taylor swift right. right now i mean it's and i love what she's doing for artists right now because it's helping people to understand that this is just the way we express ourselves. So, yeah. like, I've, I've had people before who, you know, I get an angry text from someone who's like, I can't believe you put me in a song, or I can't believe, I think this song is about me, and I can't believe you would do that. And I'm like, brah. Like, I didn't do it for you or yeah. because of you. I did it because I almost couldn't help it. Yeah. Like, this is the way that I I cope and this is the way that I communicate. I'm not going to call you up and yeah. chew you up for everything you've done to me. Yeah. I'm going to, you know, write a poem or a song about it and let it let it loose in the world. What I'm not going to do is tell people who it's about and you know, use that to put anyone down. It's it's actually not about you. It's actually about me. Yeah, I always <laughs> so. tell people, do not hurt, do not irritate or anger an artist with a platform or a creative outlet <laughs> because you could end up in a song or you could end up on the radio. So the title of my first track on the Triplets EP is You'd End Up in a Song. Oh, is this about a guy? It's about a, a an ex friend, actually. Ooh, yeah, I love but, that. Yeah, I love but that. it's it's like what? Well, okay, it's 
here's the thing about songwriting is it's not necessarily about one solidified person. Uh-huh. It's about an experience. So I actually had the idea for the chorus a long time ago because um, sometimes I just sit there and I'm like, I wonder what my ex-boyfriend's like. I've been married for 13 years. Uh-huh. So this is my any ex-boyfriend I have is like 15 years old okay. or, or older, right? Uh-huh. But sometimes I stop and I think and I'm like, I still gig with some of those songs. Yeah. And I'm like, if they ever heard it, would they know it was about them and would they care? <laughs> like, how would they feel? And so I came up with this chorus that says, why are you pouting? Why is your face so long? You knew when it ended, you'd end up in a song. Yeah. Oh, now you're shouting like I done you so wrong. You knew when it ended, you'd end up in a song. And so um, that element of it, I had that written uh, for years and years and years, and it was stowed away in a little file folder on my phone. Um, and then I had a season more recently, uh, um, several years back, where there was a parting of ways with uh, a music colleague and a friend, and that kind of filled in some of the blank spaces for the emotions that needed to go into the verses that connected with that song. So, yeah. When you are writing your songs, when you are trying to get your inspiration, walk us through that, because I know there's other artists out there that want to be songwriters. They want to Uh write their original songs and music, and and we'll get to your teaching in a minute, because I I know you teach. (laughs) But when walk us through kind of like your process. What's that like for you? Do you need to be by yourself? Do you need to be tucked away at a cabin where, where nobody else is there? Do you need to be by an ocean, the mountains? <laughs> what What's your, Vanessa, what is your process like for writing music? Well, so I, I don't need to go away somewhere, although I did, I did do a writer's retreat, which is where the triplets uh, came out. That For people who don't know what we're talking about, the, the EP that won... Um, uh, album of the year at the Lexington Music Awards this year is called The Triplets. And I call it that because it's three songs that I wrote on the same day. Yeah. So I call those songs The Triplets. Um, and so I wrote that on a writer's retreat. And for writers who are looking to go on a retreat, you don't need to spend a lot of money and go like into the mountains or go to one of those places that they have specifically reserved for writers. I just called up a friend who has a cool loft house in the country and asked if I could borrow her house while she was at work Yeah. for like four days in a row and I just went to her house nine to five and wrote and then went home at the end of the day came back the next day wrote etc do you pull from past traumas <laughs> or, or, all the time all the time nothing's off limits like, seriously like you hurt me a decade ago yeah. I might write a song about it tomorrow Uh-oh. like yeah um, a cool thing happened to me where I was queen of the world five years ago I might write about it on Tuesday, you know, so um, those those past experiences are never off limits or never they never die is the thing for songwriters. You're right, and I noticed that you have on a Taylor Swift shirt, yeah. and, I, yeah. and I was going to ask you who is some of your musical artists that maybe help influence you. You know, yeah. Taylor Swift has been described by a lot of people as as somewhat of a poet. Oh my gosh! Now and now it's so, so much of a poet now that the tortured poets uh, department has come out. Right, right. Yeah. So, do you? I'm, I'm assuming since you have on the t-shirt, yeah. what do you think of Taylor well, in her song? First of all, I, I went to the show. So, oh, okay. So this is my like, hey, I yeah. got to go to the Eras tour <laughs> shirt. But um, the thing that I really learned from Taylor Swift's writing was during her Folklore and Evermore albums, which were her quarantine albums, and in those she explored a lot of other people's stories, Mm -hmm. um, both real and fiction. And that really gave me permission to not always have to write from fact. Um, And that was when I started, um, you know, exploring some other stories or some other ways to say things that don't always have to be 100% how it happened. Like if I throw in a line that sounds better than what the truth was, that's okay. That's not me lying, that's me telling a better story. Because yeah. as songwriters, we're storytellers, and it doesn't mean that 100% of what you're hearing is how it actually happened. I love that. I absolutely love that. So, what kind of new projects do you have <laughs> going on as we speak? Yeah, well, um, the super new and super top secret because I haven't actually sat down to write anything yet. I've got things on my voice memo and I've got things in my little notes app on my phone where when I 
when I feel, and you were, you were asking me about this process. It's for me, it's when I feel the muse, I sit down and write. And yes, I have to be alone because I don't want anyone hearing me hashing out my nonsense and my garbage. Right. So like, I don't even want my husband hearing when I'm writing. Right. I go and I shut the door and I write and he knows to leave me alone. Because it's, like, <laughs> it's like you're learning how to play an instrument almost yeah. and it don't sound that good. I don't good. want him to hear all the mistakes. Yes. yes. <laughs> he can hear it when it's finished. Yes. Yes. Um, but uh, so, so I'm a new mom. I had a baby in Congrats. December. I yes. know. Thank you. How Old. And he's four months Woo, now. Yeah. That, that's a baby yeah. boy. So he is a baby boy, yeah. and he's the greatest. Um, so my new, I'm loving my mom era, right? Uh, yep. And and kind of the new project that I have my eyes on, but I can't even say is in full swing yet, is to do songs about that, right. about like lullabies and songs about motherhood and the light side and the not so light side and. Um, so, yeah, I think I'm going to do an album on it called Oliver Songs, which his name is Oliver. So it's like Oliver Songs, but it also sounds like all of her songs. You give off a lot of Taylor so. Swift vibes <laughs> as far as, like, your music goes because, like, I just love how you appreciate the process. You love the songwriting. Mm-hmm. You love the originality of it, just mm-hmm. the art. And yeah. I, I love that. So what is some advice that you could give for some aspiring singer-songwriters? Because you are a teacher as well. Right. Talk a little bit about yeah, being a okay. teacher. Yeah, okay. Here's my most practical advice is get some lessons Mm -hmm. because I'll have students come up to me and they're they're like like I do teach songwriting but the most successful students that I've had in songwriting are ones that are investing in musical knowledge so you can't not know how to play any instruments or understand chord structure and expect to be able to write a song like that's probably not going to happen. And if it does, you're going to be someone who's rattling off a melody and you don't know what key you're in, you don't know what chords you're using, and then you need someone else to come along beside you and put chords to it. But there are different chords that could go to this part and what do you want it to sound like? And then it's very much them almost writing it for you. So my most practical advice is if you're looking to songwrite, you need to get music lessons, learn guitar or learn piano. Is that something that you as a teacher can help students with? Yeah. Oh, I I teach um, voice, piano and guitar. And then I teach theory and songwriting as well. So you could come and get all all the package. Tell everyone <laughs> get the whole package. <laughs> tell everyone right now listening on the Lexington Airwaves and beyond how they can connect with you to get in touch with you for those lessons. Sure. So I, a disclaimer: I do have a wait list. Okay. Um. So it's probably going to be a while. She's good, folks. <laughs> um. But I do take new students in the summer. So if you're wanting a couple casual lessons here and there, um, that happens in the summertime. But the best way that you can contact contact me would be through my social media. So if you go on um, Facebook and look for the page, Vanessa Davis Music, and just send me send me a message on that. Or uh, go to Instagram at Songwriter Vanessa and just slide into my DMs and we can connect that way. Yes, I think that is so amazing. Well, unfortunately, Vanessa, we <laughs> are out of time. I could have talked for hours. I could have talked to you <laughs> for more and more hours. I'm going to have to have you back. Yeah, sounds gonna good. I'm going to have to have you back. I, this always happens to me. I always want more time with my guests. <laughs> but thank you so much. Uh, folks, go out and follow Vanessa on social media. Hit her up for those lessons. It, it is, if you want that Taylor Swift vibe, you've got one right here in, in the city. I'm telling you, she's very talented. Her awards speak for themselves. Thank you for listening to another episode of Off the Cuff with Adam Banks. We will be back same time, same place. I am Adam Banks, and this is Off the Cuff. I'll catch you down the road.